Hello, hello. So today I'm going to work the waistcoat stitch with you. So this is just a small sample swatch that I made up. It's an awesome stitch. It's a one row repeat. Very easy. Just need to know single crochets. It works up really quick. It's very thick. It's a reversible stitch. Let's work this one together. So for this tutorial, I'm working with a worsted weight acrylic yarn and I'm using a 5.5 millimeter hook. To start the waistcoat stitch, we're going to do a slip knot. And then the foundation chain for this stitch is any amount of chains that you want. And then just add one additional one for your turning chain. So for myself, I'm going to work 16. To work a chain, we just have our hook through our slip knot and you yarn over your hook and pull through and pull up a new loop. Yarn over and pull up a new loop. Yarn over and pull through. So there's three, four, five. Work your desired length. Like I said, I'm going to work 16 and I will meet you and we can work row one together. So this is 16 chains. I like to work my first row into this back bar that you see, so not into the V, but I like to turn my work over and I work into this back bar. That's just a personal preference. Row one, we will work a single crochet into the second chain from our hook. So from our hook one, two, we will work a single crochet into that chain there. So just insert your hook underneath your chain, yarn over and pull up a loop. So you have two loops on your hook and then yarn over and pull through both loops. So that's a single crochet into the second chain and then into every chain across, continue to work single crochets. So into your next chain, just insert your hook, yarn over and pull up a loop. So there's two, yarn over and pull through two. A suggestion I have while working this, if you do crochet with a tighter tension, try your hardest to keep um, just a bit of a looser tension because when you're coming back around to work the second row, it's a little bit hard to work in to where you're gonna work in the stitch. So if you have it just a little bit looser, it makes the second row and all the subsequent rows a lot easier. So keep working single crochets all the way across this row and I will meet you at the end and we will work row two together. So I'm just finishing up row one with a single crochet into my final chain. And once you finish that, you will have a row of single crochets that looks like this. So row two is our repeated row for this pattern. So you're just going to repeat row two for however long you want your project to be. To start it off, we will chain one and we're not counting that as a stitch. And we're going to turn our work around. Um, personally for myself, when I'm working this stitch, I like to start off the first stitch and the last stitch of every row to repeat with a single crochet, the way you would normally do a single crochet. So into our first stitch here, we will work a single crochet like normal. And then let's look at the next stitch together. So if we were to work the following single crochet, we would work it through these two loops at the top or the V at the top, that's where the normal single crochet would be worked. If you look at the stitch a little bit closely here, you can see that we have the front loop right here of the top stitch. So that's the front loop. And then you have this horizontal bar right here. So you can see this is the horizontal bar I'm talking about. And then underneath that horizontal bar, you can see two posts, so one here and then one here. And if you put your yarn needle through that post, you'll actually go right to the other side. And if you give it a little wiggle, you can see that your hook will actually fit right through those two posts underneath the second horizontal bar or the horizontal bar underneath the stitch. And that's where we're going to work the single crochets across the rest of the row. So we find the next stitch where we would work, find that little bar, find those two posts and then work your single crochet into that little space between the two posts. So right through there, 
when working this in the first row, it's sometimes a little bit tight. That's why I said to try to keep an even tension when you're working the previous row. So when you're finishing up this single crochet, this bar here, this loop here, pull it up a little bit so it's a little bit longer. That's going to help you when you're coming back around in fitting through into the next rows. So finish the single crochet off like that. Find our next stitch where we would normally work the single crochet. Then you have that horizontal bar there. And then you can see here the two posts where we're going to work between them. So we're going to work between those two posts there. And that's where we work the single crochet. And we're going to work that all the way across. I'll work a couple more with you. Find in between your posts. Pull this loop up a little bit longer than you normally would and finish the single crochet off as normal. And that is how easy this stitch is. So like I said, the first row of working in between the posts can sometimes be tricky, but by leaving this loop a little bit longer, it makes for the rest of the rows to go by pretty quickly. I will meet you at the end and show you how to finish this off. I'm just finishing up the row here. So if we just kind of look, we have a single crochet here where we're gonna work the waistcoat stitch. So we're just going to do that there. And then into our final stitch, because we're not counting that chain that we skipped as a stitch. So in our final stitch, we'll actually just work a regular single crochet. And at the end of that row, you can see these V's that have formed by working through the posts of the previous single crochet. So like I said, row two is your repeated row. So I'll start it off again with you one more time before showing you just a larger sample swatch. We're going to chain one, turn our work around, single crochet into our first stitch. The chain one does not count as a stitch. So just a regular single crochet like that. And then into your next, you're gonna work in between this one here is a little bit big because I see I've worked the stitch a little bit big in the previous row, but just like before, you have that horizontal bar and you're going to work in between the two posts. So for this one here, you can really see the posts that you're going to work through. And that's what I was saying when I was saying it's a little bit easier to identify in all your subsequent rows where to work your single crochets. So you will work it right in here. So your first one here, 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 and all the way across like that. Just working those single crochets and like I said kind of pull this loop up a little bit more and that is the waistcoat stitch so work this for however long you need to for your project I'll continue working up a little bit of a larger sample swatch so you can see how cute this stitch really is it offers like a knit like look so if you don't like to knit but you like the way it looks this is a really awesome way to make a project that looks like you know how to knit me. So I'll meet you after a larger sample swatch here and show you what it looks like after you've worked it a little bit longer. So here I am. I'm just going to finish up my final row of my larger sample swatch here. And with that done, you can really see how cool this stitch is. So like I said, it's super knit looking. It's really, really a thick stitch. I feel like you could do so many things with this from like a scarf to a hat to a dishcloth because it's thick enough that it would be great for a dishcloth. I'm absolutely in love with this stitch. So it's the waistcoat stitch. And I hope this tutorial helped you guys figure it out.